Hey folks, Damien with Southpaw Designs, and today I'm going to show you how to use this bowl bit along with the Onefinity CNC as well as some gorgeous smelling Odie's oil to create this catch-all tray made out of black walnut. Now this is actually the second part of a two-part series, the first of which can be seen down in the description below on how to actually create this particular project. In the first video, which I've already posted, and like I said, is in the description below, I show you how to use VCarve Pro to actually create the design. In this project, I'm gonna show you the steps that we actually go through to prepare, cut out, and finish this product. You will wanna watch this all the way through because I learned so much about how to better use this bowl bit throughout the course of this project. Also, at the end, I'm going to show you some of the things that I learned and things that I do differently in the future. Okay, so to start with, I'm going to take my walnut and I'm going to send it through my planer to get it down to one inch. Yeah, I know, I need better dust collection. And next, we're going to use the old CA glue and tape method to hold it down to our spoil board. Now, because this is a fairly large project, uh, I'm also gonna use a couple of clamps to uh, hold it down as well. I made sure to place them out of the way of my bit so there's no chance of it actually running over those clamps. That's something that I'm always afraid of, which is why I'm hesitant to use clamps, and I typically just go with the CA glue and tape method. So let's press it on, ready to go, and then I'll put my clamps in place. There shouldn't be any chance of them actually hitting it. And next, we're gonna home the machine here. Now I've never, I'm sorry, probed the machine here. Now I've never probed this uh, three quarter inch bowl bit before, so I wasn't sure if I was doing it right, but I did it the way what I'd, that I would probe any other bit, uh, any other end mill bit, and it worked just fine. All right, let's go ahead and move our probe out of the way, and we're ready to start. Uh, always make sure to run any pockets first before I do the cutout. I had a mistake on one previous build, and it scared the poop out of me. Let's get it loaded, and we're ready to go. Now in the first video, in the design video, you'll hear me be a little bit apprehensive about using this bowl bit to go down 0.3 inches in one pass. But those were the settings that were already in there. So I trusted it and I left them alone. In hindsight, I realized it wasn't a good idea. What may have happened is I could have been in the middle of a project and I adjusted some of the settings and then got distracted somehow Forest. It happens and then forgot to finish adjusting those settings. In hindsight, I made some changes, which I'll talk about in a minute, but see how it went. Prepare your speakers because you're getting ready to hear a much too aggressive cut. That's not a good sound. It vibrated everything. And I realized that I was way too aggressive with trying to take down 0.3 inches in one pass. I went back and adjusted it to four passes and then I tried to salvage the board. But as you can tell, the bit actually shifted down during that first cut with all of that craziness that was going on. And it went way too far into uh, this wood. No big deal. I'll just take this lumber, cut it down, flip it over, and use the backside as um, uh, coasters. I realized pretty early that I wasn't going to be able to salvage this piece, but I let it run for a little while just to see what it looked like, and it did run much better this time. In fact, I was probably a little bit 
too conservative and I could have maybe sped it up or increased the step over a little bit. Decided to take the material off, grabbed a new piece and started from scratch. Going to probe it one more time. Hit go, and this time works much better. Now I have sped this way up. Now the great thing about a CNC is that you can actually do other things while the CNC is working. So it's like having an employee. I took a little time to clean up the shop. Organize a few things. Work on my dance moves little cabbage patch for you and what's that thing those kids were doing on Instagram and the TikTok something about flossing and eh, never mind now before we go any further I do want to mention that absolutely nothing that I use in this project is sponsored however I am an Amazon affiliate so product links below will take you to some of the products that I use throughout the project they don't cost you a penny more, but if you do uh, choose to buy through those links, I get a little bit of a kickback. So that's a way that you can support the channel at no cost to you. So let's go ahead and check in on it. Almost done here, and this one looks so much better. Okay, once we're done with the bowl bit, let's go take it out and let's replace it with our quarter inch bit. We're going to use this to actually cut it out. And what I realized is I couldn't get that quarter inch bit inside the collet. The best I can figure is that because the CNC ran for so long, it swelled up. The heat caused it to swell up and I had a hard time working it in. I finally got it in there and we were ready to go again. This time I'm just going to probe the Z. Now you always want to push the bit as far up into the collet as it'll go so you have a good grip on your bit. But as it's cutting, I start thinking, uh, did I go too far? Am I going to be able to cut all the way through this or am I going to cut into the wood? Is the collet going to actually hit the wood? So I decide to measure and realize that I'm okay. Now, you're able to do this on the Onefinity anyway, because you can pause your project, turn off the router, and then do anything you want and hit play again. I don't know if you can do that with other CNC's, but it's relatively easy to do with the Onefinity. Looks like we're almost cut out, and we're ready to go. Once it's cut out, let's take it off of the spoil board take it to the work area where we're going to remove all that tape now I typically I don't use tabs but a lot of the time I'll leave a little bit of extra material or cut it a couple hundredths of an inch uh, thicker than it needs to be so that I can break that off. Now be careful because if you do that you could actually rip off a little bit of that walnut. From then it's over to the spindle sander to clean up those edges. I'm using an 80 grit right here but I'll continue with a 120 and a 220 grit to make it nice and smooth. Once we're done with the spindle sander I found these little um, sanding discs as well as this uh, styrofoam or, or foam padded insert that goes into my drill and I decided to give that a shot and it's really nice for getting into those small areas and speeds up what would normally take forever with hand sanding now I'm not saying you don't need to do a little hand sanding but this does speed up the process from there I'll flip it over use the random orbit sander to get the bottom and again I typically sand an 80 grit 120 and 220. If you guys tell me to, I'll probably go a little bit further, but I found 220 gives it a nice smooth finish. 
because I accidentally broke off a couple of those small edges when I was tearing off that remaining wood uh, I have a couple of rough edges right there and so I had to go back and get the uh, corners round those off a bit I'll correct those in the next project that I do next comes the Odie's oil now I thought this stuff was expensive when I got it but it goes a long way I've used it on a few projects and I've barely used any out of this jar it smells great goes on smooth and gives this buttery finish I love it and I'll use it any chance that I get moving forward simply spread it on with these Scotch bright pads and really work it into the fibers that's gonna let it sink in quite a bit I found these handy dandy painters triangles that we can put on the underside of them so that it'll dry and the air will be on the upside and the underside as well. Let it dry, give it about an hour to an hour and a half and then I come back and I try to really buff off as much of that as I can. Now they say to use a, uh, a regular towel but I don't have any small towels so I just use my shop towels. It does a great job for me. Now I know full well that I probably look like some sort of TV pitch man, like Vince the Sham Wow Guy or Billy Mays, but it couldn't be further from the truth. I'm not getting paid, but I will tell you, this Odie's oil is a gorgeous finish to use on your work. It's food safe, it goes on like butter, uh, dries and is ready to be buffed off in about an hour or two, and it smells great. It's got this nice little lemon scent to it. I've used this on a few different projects and I really love it. I'd highly recommend it. There's a link in the description down below if you're interested in getting some and it's a, it's a wonderful project. I'll use this quite a bit. Now, what would I change moving forward? Number one, now that this is finished, I realize it really doesn't go that deep. I could use it as like kind of a, a candy dish or a nut dish or a change tray or something like that. So I'm going to redesign it and have it go a little bit deeper. Um, also, I could have finished and sanded a little bit better. I think I only sanded with the 120 and 220. I'll probably go back and sand it with an 80 grit to get rid of some of those marks a little bit, which they're not obvious, but there are some, some marks in there that I'll go and clean that up. And in the future, I'll know to do that better. But this project was a great learning experience. And now that I know how to do it, what I'll do next is I'll go back and I'll add some cherry, some oak, some maple, maybe put some, some stripes in it, uh, use some different formations and variations of wood to create a, um, a more interesting looking finished product. But this was a great project for a beginning CNCer to do. And it's one that you can easily uh, replicate on your own CNC, whether it's a Onefinity, Shapeco, uh, or any other desktop CNC. So I hope you enjoyed this video and please leave a comment below. Let me know what questions you have. Tell me whether or not you liked it, what you would do differently because I'm constantly learning and I love hearing from you guys because you teach me so much. And then once again, subscribe to the channel and can't wait for the next one.